at what point did you uh, feel comfort, confident and comfortable that you might be able to make some money playing the game of basketball? There's always the dream um, from the time I was probably eight or nine where you're like, I know what NBA basketball is and I want to get there. But the honest answer is literally after my sophomore year in college, we had um, just played in the uh, lead eight or the yeah, lead eight game against Kansas. Um, we lost on a last second or we missed the last second shot in uh, Ford Field up in Detroit. We're a mid-major, almost one shot away from making it to the Final Four. You have some – I'm a sophomore. We have seniors that, you know, led the team the entire year. There's their last game. There's so many emotions. We're in the locker room crying. Uh, an interview start after the game. The first question one of the interview guys asked me was like, "Yo, are you declaring for the draft?" I'm like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> <laughs> what? No, like, <laughs> uh, I believe like I'm not even being funny. It wasn't even on my radar. And after he asked that question, I started thinking like, "Oh, wait, maybe I, I guess I could." Like that'd be that'd be crazy. And then I started to actually analyze the situation. I started looking at draft boards at that point. So I realized um, what I might need to add to my game to be an actual legit professional, um, which is why I stayed an extra year to transfer or transition to a point guard uh, role and be more of a playmaker and a scorer, which is um, how I thought I'd be, you know, best suited to make it to, to the next level. Uh, but, yeah, that was the first time I actually um, even thought about it as a legit possibility. Um but thankfully, I made the right decision to come back an extra year to get stronger, work on, you know, seeing the game from a point guard position because I was only 6'3". It wasn't a situation I was going to come in as a shooting guard. So um, things worked out in that respect. You mentioned that run, that Davidson run. That was an all-timer. And it was so much for everyone to see because no one had heard really of Davidson for that much. And yeah. for you, not really at all. I know uh, – Real basketball people knew and could because you were a scoring elite guy, but the nation after that run had ended and you walked, you know, back onto campus or out. How was your life different from that? Was that the moment you were like, everything's changed? 100%. Um, like you said, our school was 1900 students, so um, the world in that respect didn't get any bigger, but the, the, the spotlight of you know, even doing uh. Was it five good minutes on PTI? Um, mm. like all, I did a Jim Rome interview on T. I was all those like type of interview requests started rolling in. It was like I went on a uh, late night show um, with uh, I forget his name now. I'm tripping. Uh, <laughs> Roy Firestone he or somebody. <laughs> what's, the red, what's the tall redhead guy? Conan. 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 I did. A, I've been did on a, there twice. Yeah, I went to I went to New York and uh, and did that as a, as a sophomore in college, and that's when the world kind of flipped upside down. But granted, to you, I was Del Curry's son for a while in yeah. Charlotte, and it was like I knew what it was like to be known around a city, but it wasn't on my own like merits. It was just you know the Curry name, which so was a little different in that respect. But uh, the funniest part was when I got back from from uh, from that game. I had my little laptop in my dorm room and this is Facebook's early days, you know, me being on there, my, my computer crashed because I had uh, over a thousand uh, in messages in my inbox. And I, tried to, <laughs> I tried to log in after I got back from the game. The whole computer crashed. All my work was on there. It was, it was a total <laughs> disaster. So that's when it got it got messed up because it was interrupting my 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 academic future. <laughs> I was like, I need a freaking computer. Um, but yeah, Play it's weird. Well. Being, yeah, the one part of it is 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 cool because it's such a small tight knit community in the campus that. Yeah, uh, I could always revert back to that. It wasn't like, you know, you're meeting new people every single day right. in a big, you know, Division One school with 30, 40,000, you know, students. So there was some comfort in that, that I didn't, I wasn't going to get too big headed um, in the moment and uh, things could kind of stay normal to a certain extent. My, my nephew Ross wrote this question. I asked him, do you 
he's a big fan of yours. And he said, I want to know if it's true. He read that after that run, like the next day you went back, it was, there was some sort of orientation or something. And you actually went out and helped all the kids bring their stuff. The in, OT like, team. Like the the orientation it. team. Yeah. We, and uh, my guy, Steve Roster with my teammates and my college roommate, Brian Barr, we, uh, we signed up, we got our little fresh t-shirts says OT on it. Orientation team. We're moving into freshmen into their dorms and the whole deal, giving the parents some uh, directions around campus and stuff. You know, I had to keep it, had to keep it. Uh, I want, I wanted the normal college experience. I didn't want to be somewhere where it's just about basketball. So that was fun. Well, that's why God gave you that, because if I had just come off that run, I'd be like, go help kids bring their shit in. Have you seen my hand? I could hurt this. You, you were raised right. My parents, they're terrible. 